हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल In this video I'll be speaking about the case of PC. It's not the romantic one, it's more like Dementor's case in the Harry Potter. So we'll see this video a routine case kind of a dense cataract and we are going in with the FACO going on smoothly, no issues as such and we have removed most of the nucleus. It comes to the last piece and uh, there is a uh, some amount of epinucleus in the form of a sheet which is left. It's a common situation to have where a sheet of epinucleus is left and you have to lift it up and then just aspirate in the anterior chamber and that's what I did here. But I realized that during epinucleus removal, I have also touched the posterior capsule and caused a small PC rupture there and let's see when it happened. So while picking up this epinuclear plate, though the anterior chamber appears stable, the FACO tip touched the posterior capsule and uh, caused circular PC rent. It's not a very rare situation to have. So let's find out the causes behind it. The undulating PC and fluid in Burger space are the common causes. Jagged FACO tip increases the chance of tear of the posterior capsule. Also using a high vacuum and using unnecessary FACO burst during the epinucleus removal can also pierce through the posterior capsule. So in this particular case, I think undulating PC and that jagged FACO tip might have touched the posterior capsule and caused this uh, PC rupture. Now once I notice this, what I'm going to do is uh, do OVD BSS exchange that means I'll be pushing the OVD without removing the FACO probe making sure that the anterior chamber is relatively maintained even when I take out the irrigation that avoids prolapse of the anterior hyaloid and rupture of anterior hyaloid now I'm going to convert it to PCCC so heavy OVD if available avoid excess shallowing or deepening of the anterior chamber and try to regrasp the tear multiple times that avoids uncontrolled PCC and uh, push the antihyloid down with OVD if you feel that it's bulging up because you don't want to rupture the antihyloid. PCCC is really easier than what we think. So now what I have is a complete posterior capsule rexis with intact antihyloid. So I can use the regular coaxial IA for removal of the remaining cortex. Always keep the low bottle height so you don't want to rupture the antihyloid, keep low vacuum and flow rate and avoid going closer to the area where the antihyloid is exposed. But you, as you can see you can easily remove the cortex and I just want to show here that the irrigation pressure that in the bottle height I have kept it at 70 centimeters. So around 60 to 70 centimeters of bottle height is what I recommend for cases where you don't want the anti-highlight to be ruptured and always keep the low vacuum parameters according to the bottle height. Again OVD BSS exchange always and now I am going to put the IOLs. Always keep Sinsky under the IOLs so it doesn't hit the PC jerkily that may cause extension of the posterior capsule axis and then it will be dialed inside. I am I have used 1% hyaluronate in the back so I can remove it quickly afterwards. Be gentle in IOL insertion in such cases because though you have made a posterior capsule axis, there might be few nicks at the edges of this capsule axis which we may not realize at this point. So it's best to be as gentle as possible. Rotate it near the axis where you want to place it and then do visco expiration. Again you can see that I am using 60 centimeters of bottle height there and I am going to aspirate all the viscoelastic again making sure that the aspiration port doesn't direct towards the anti-hyaloid area and uh, 
I'm going to gently nudge the IL in the axis placement. I'm using the Callisto markerless system here, which is guiding for the IL placement. Once it is done, just hydrate the incision, nudge the IL into the final axis of placement. So even with the posterior capsular rupture at the time of epinucleus removal, I could do PCCC and place the IL in the back. So how to avoid this particular complication because I find that in beginner's hand this is quite common and once they get this complication they are even more worried because uh, next time the epinucleus clump comes up they are little bit anxious what will happen. So this typically happens when there is a plate like epinucleus because you can't really see what is happening with the PC and in most such cases where the PC rupture occurs there is undulating PC. So uh, this undulating PC can be because of the large nucleus which was there uh, for example little bit of harder cataract or higher nucleus crosses or uh, lens thickness is higher to begin with in myopes also or if there is a fluid in the Berger space which happened uh, which went there during the procedure. So when you have undulating PC even with the lower parameters it may just come to the FACO tip when you are aspirating out the epinucleus. So we have to be re really careful in such situations. So what I advise for beginners is that keep the parameters very very low for epinucleus. FACO energy you can make it zero because uh, you don't need really any FACO during epinucleus removal. And uh, you can use your left hand since any blunt instrument underneath the FACO tip. So when you are aspirating you are sure that you can keep the posterior capsule little bit away and aspirate this little anteriorly so no need to do it at iris plane you can just pull it up in the anterior chamber and then uh, you can aspirate it there also uh, believe in the fluidics of the system many times like in this case i tried to go near the epinucleus and grab hold of it even if you stay in the center little away from the epinucleus and keep giving vacuum most times the epinucleus will come out uh, it will may not come out if it is stuck. So if it is stuck, it's better to release it using viscoelastic or maybe even more hydro. Bring it up and then aspirate it out. So uh, another this is safer way is not to use the FACO probe, but uh, rather move on to the IA probe either by manual or coaxial and then uh, take out this epinucleus sheet. It may take little longer, but it may be safer in your hands. So uh, this is not a very rare situation. We just need to be more careful by dealing with the epinucleus because this is just last part of the FACO emulsification. We are all excited that we have done the FACO emulsification, but uh, this uh, little bit of uh, you know loss of focus during the uh, removal of the epinucleus can cause a PC rupture. Now in this case, there was a intact antihyloid, which is very common to have in such cases unless you use very high FACO energy or high vacuum which pulls out or ruptures the antihyloid. So you can take care of this complication very easily, nothing to worry about, but make sure you don't make uh, such a complication again by taking all due precautions. So thank you so much for much watching my videos and do subscribe to my YouTube channel and also share with your friends and colleagues. Thank you.